friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today, I have a book haul for you. It is that time yet again. We're gonna talk about the books that have come into my possession during the month of February. Got a lot of stuff to talk about, and part of it is that I got quite a number of gifts. I bought myself some books, and publishers have been sending me a lot of things like all of the sudden so some things I'm really really excited for and yeah so let's go ahead and dive into it why don't we start with my pre-orders so for this month I've had two pre-orders come in I have one coming in at the very end of the month but that's going to get bumped into my March book haul one that I'm sure is not surprising given the fact that I have an entire reading vlog dedicated to it but you know I got A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Mass. Yes. So if you haven't seen that, I will link it up above. It's super spoilery and possibly by now I'll also have a review video up. So if I have the review that's not spoilery, I'll link that up above. So I know that Sarah J Mass is not everybody's cup of tea, but I do really enjoy her books. And honestly, I think A Court of Silver Flames is arguably the best book she's ever written. It's an intense one that's really about trauma and healing for trauma. It also leans really hard into the steamy adult romance thing. And it is clear she is pivoting and rebranding herself. And I really loved this a lot. I don't actually even own the rest of the Akatar series. I have read all of them, but it's not my favorite series from her. This, I am so happy that I decided to pre-order a finished copy because it is one that I do want to own and keep on my shelves. So, um, first pre-order. And then the other book that I pre-ordered is Wild Rain by Beverly Jenkins. I've been waiting for this four months. <laughs> it got pushed back due to COVID but it is here. I'm excited for it. I am definitely excited to pick this up. I love Beverly Jenkins. She writes really wonderful historical romance. I always learn something from her books and I'm excited to see Rain's story. She is the sister of the hero from Tempest, which is my favorite book I've read from her so far. So yay, those are my two pre-orders. Next, let's talk about gifts. I had some really, really lovely gifts this month. First, someone who follows me, who I think also actually has a small YouTube channel, so I'll link her down below, but she had reached out to me about some books that I had been wanting to have copies of to see if I'd be interested in hers because she didn't need them anymore, which I was like so thrilled about. It was so kind of you. This is Evie from She Was Only Evie. So again, I will link her channel down below, but she saw one of my many videos probably raving about the Brother Sinister series by Courtney Milan and heard that I didn't own a couple of the books in the series. And she was like, hey, I don't need my copies anymore. Do you want them? And I was like, yes, please send them to me. So she very kindly sent me her copies of The Suffragette Scandal and The Countess Conspiracy. So now I own the entire series, which is so exciting because I really love it. It's one of my favorite romance series. I love all of these books so much so thank you so much to Evie that was really thoughtful and really kind I appreciate it excuse my children in the background like it's noisy they're here it's snowing today this is when we're filming this, it's fine. Then a subscriber very kindly decided to send me a book that I had wanted, and that is When Beauty Tamed the Beast by Eloisa James. I was super thoughtful. I had been interested in this. Obviously, it's a historical romance retelling of Beauty and the Beast. I've heard some really good things about it, and I have generally enjoyed Eloisa James pretty well. So thank you so much to her, that was really nice. Then Izzy from the channel Happy For Now, who I will also link down below, uh, unexpectedly sent me a couple of things off my wish list as like a congrats on reaching 10k which is super thoughtful and I'm really excited about these. We are actually going to be buddy reading one of these together in a couple months too which I'm excited for but she sent me A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher which I'm excited for. I have never read Amanda Boucher but everybody seems to think she's amazing for fantasy romance. We all know I enjoy fantasy romance so... I am here for it. Thank you, Izzy, for that. And then the one that we're going to be buddy reading together is a nonfiction title that I originally heard about from Books and Lala, and it looked so good. This is Disfigured on Fairy Tales, Disability, and Making Space by Amanda Leduc. This is, uh, well, I mean, exactly what it sounds like. It's a nonfiction book about the problematic representation of disabled characters in fairy tales in a lot of fairy tale retellings where they're frequently made into villains or seen as like horrific and um yeah so I've heard really good things about this I'm looking forward to reading it huge thanks to Izzy her channel is really wonderful if you guys are especially into reading romance you f should absolutely be following her so check out the link down below if you're not yet 
And lastly, in terms of gifts, was a Valentine's Day gift from my wonderful husband. He actually also gave me some delicious dark chocolate and bath salts to go along with a book from my wish list. And this is The Missing of Claire de Lune by Christelle Davos, which is awesome. I just read Winter's Promise and after that had added the next couple books in the series to my wish list because I do really want to continue on with the series. And now I have book two and it's so pretty. Um, and also now, oh, this is interesting. Huh. I didn't know it had this. It's got, I'm gonna have to look at this. This is super interesting. The clans. I wonder if it's gonna like expand the world. But yeah, I really liked Winter's Promise. I do want to continue with the series. So thank you to my husband for this lovely Valentine's Day gift. Next up, let's talk about books that were sent to me for review from publishers and authors. I've got some really exciting things. First, I have one book from the Harlequin publicity team that I got for a promotion on Instagram. This is Best Laid Plans by Roan Parrish. It's yet another installment in their Karina Adores line. This one is kind of a small town, opposites attract, male male romance, and it involves a character who's dealing with grief. It looks great. Thank you to Harlequin for sending that along. I also have one book that arrived from an indie published author and this is one I'm going to be reading in March so you're going to see this on my TBR. I am really interested in it and honestly I love the cover for an indie published book. It's got a pretty great cover. This is The Hand That Takes by Taylor O'Connell, book one in the Fall of the Coward series. This is grim dark fantasy. Is that not a great cover? Like it's a really great cover. Um, yeah, so he had reached out to me and asked if I would be interested based on the description. It sounded really cool. And he sent me this as well as access to the audiobook, which is awesome because y'all know I love audiobooks. So I'm probably going to be doing a blended read on this one. Oh, and it's not very long either. It's like 260 pages. I'm excited for it. Thank you so much to Taylor. If that sounds appealing, if you guys are grimdark fantasy fans, definitely check it out. So I'm not going to read the whole thing on the back, but it says, a magical artifact, a violent crime syndicate, a thief in over his head. And it says it's the perfect novel for fans of Scott Lynch, Robin Hobb, and Patrick Rothfuss. So we will see how it goes. I'll be reading this one in March. Thank you, Taylor. Then I had another book come in from Macmillan Kids. This is again, a middle grade nonfiction title. They sent me one last month too. This looks super interesting. So they reached out to me and I was like, yeah, send it along. This is Baseball's Leading Lady, F.A. Manley and the Rise and Fall of the Negro Leagues by Andrea Williams. Looks super interesting. It's about this woman who I guess was really important in women's baseball, a black woman. It's got pictures in it. It's got big text. It's a nonfiction book written for middle grade which sounds cool. I really like this kind of thing because you tend to learn a lot, but in a way that's easily accessible. So thank you so much to Macmillan Kids. Um, if you guys are interested, definitely go check it out. Or if you're looking for a good nonfiction title or biography for your younger children, this might be one to pick up. I'm telling you guys, we got a lot from publishers this month. Like February seems to be a big month for publishing. I got a book from Entangled Publishing that looks like a lot of fun. This is The Spinster and the Rake. It's a historical romance that's pitched as My Fair Lady meets Pride and Prejudice, which sounds like a whole lot of fun. I am definitely looking forward to this one, so thank you to them for sending me a copy to read. Then First Second, which is a graphic novel imprint at Macmillan, sent me this YA sci-fi graphic novel that looks really fun and I wasn't even expecting it to be a finished copy. It's really pretty. This is called Pepper Page Saves the Universe and it looks like so much fun. It's about a 15 year old orphan named Pepper Page who's trying to escape peer pressure and bullying in high school by immersing herself in the classic comic book adventures of her favorite hero Supernova. All Pepper wants is to hide from the world, but fate intervenes in the form of a strange cat named Mr. McKittens. <laughs> I'm like living for this. I think it's going to be really great. There's like a sinister science teacher. She ends up in space. It looks like a whole lot of fun. So thank you so much to First Second for sending that. Okay then guys, I have to tell you, Tor.com has been really good to me this month. <laughs> like I don't know how I somehow ended up on one of their mailing lists but I did and I am not mad about it because I love Tor.com. I love what they publish and I am thrilled. They sent me three things and uh, one of them, I, I actually unbox it. <laughs> I unboxed it in my Court of Silver Flames vlog and like 
about lost my shit because I was so excited I saw. Anyway, okay, so I'm gonna show you what it is. This is the beautiful box. It is for Becky Chambers' new series. I love Becky Chambers. I had a New York of this book and I was like, oh my goodness, I'm so excited. This is the Monk and Robot series. So I'll show you the things that came in the box. It came with tea that is delicious. And if you wanna know how it is, again, you can check out the vlog. I did a taste test. And then it comes with this beautiful enamel pin, which is so cute. And then lastly, of course, the arc of A Song for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. I'm so excited for this. Um, yeah, I was not expecting this. It's a tour.com novella going on sale in July. And it sounds like basically the most adorable thing ever. Becky Chambers writes really soft science fiction and... I am so here for this. It's been centuries since the robots of Panga gained self-awareness and laid down their tools. Centuries since they wandered en masse into the wilderness, never to be seen again. One day, the life of a tea monk is upended by the arrival of a robot, there to honor the old promise of checking in. The robot has one question, what do people need? <laughs> like, I just, ugh, it's such a soft, hopeful thing. There's tea monks, they sent me tea and a pin. Thank you so much to Tor.com. Like, I'm so thrilled to have it. Cannot wait to read this one. I can expect to be seeing a review. But that's not all. They also sent me The Chosen and the Beautiful by Nevo, which is coming out in June. This looks amazing. Did I talk about this last month? I might have talked about this in the last month's vlog. Okay, but still, guys, I'm excited for it. It's a retelling of The Great Gatsby with magic and an Asian main character. I might have actually included that one, but I'm, it, it was in my stack of new Tor.com things. So sorry if I've mentioned that one before. This one I don't think I've mentioned. Looks super interesting. It's called Star Eater by Kirsten Hall. This one also goes on sale in June and it's like a, a, a darker fantasy that sounds very, very interesting. One thing about it is it apparently includes magical cannibalism and like the author is definitely exploring some intense themes here so I'm sure there's gonna be lots of content warnings but the premise sounds pretty wild. It follows a woman who really doesn't want to get pregnant and so she joins this order of sisters that I think do ritualistic cannibalism or something for magical reasons. I don't know, it's it's pretty wild, so I'm definitely interested. Thank you so much to Tor.com. They have been very, very good to me this year and I am excited about all this. Then Penguin Teen sent me an advanced copy of House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. This one goes on sale in April, so I'm hoping to read this in March. Really excited for it. It is a YA thriller with magical realism elements about these two sisters who are kidnapped and disappear and then come back and there's like strange things about them. So it's like thriller with magical or speculative elements. And I kind of love the cover. They sent it to me as kind of a thank you because I helped with the cover reveal and did a recreation of it for Instagram, which was really fun. I, I kind I, I, I really like the cover. So thank you to Penguin Teen. And then lastly from publishers, I got two finished copies of works of translated fiction from World Editions, which again, I was not expecting. This was so nice of them. First we have Game of the Gods by Paolo Morensig. I've read one other thing from him previously and really enjoyed it. This one looks interesting. I think both of these are going on sale in February or March, or I think March. Um, this one is the story of a lowly servant who for an instant becomes a king. Set in 1930s British India, it's dealing with colonization and chess and it's a book about karma and destiny. So it sounds really interesting. This one was translated from Italian. This was, I guess, best-selling in Italy. And then they also sent over The High Rise Diver by Julia von Lukadau. This one I think is more of like a sci-fi thriller. Oh yeah, it's like a big sister is watching you type story. For readers of The Handmaid's Tale, The Circle and Brave New World, it's got a dystopian thing. And this one, what was this translated from? Hold on, I think from German. I think this was originally in German. So thank you to World Editions. I'm definitely looking forward to checking those out as well. Okay, so this is definitely taking longer than I expected it to. I might have to take a break and come back in a little bit. We're gonna start talking about the other books that I bought for myself this month and also a book that I picked up for free. Sometimes people will leave books in the lobby of my building and it, like a lot of them I'm not that interested in, but occasionally there's something that looks good. And so this month I got Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro, which um, won the Nobel Prize. And I've just never read this. I really want to read a couple of things from him and this seems to be 
Also, it's set at a exclusive boarding school, which I, and it's gothic. Why have I not read this? It's a gothic thriller set at a boarding school. <laughs> like, how have I not read this? I love those tropes. So, um, yeah, adding this to my TBR and that, that sounds interesting. Then one that I have heard so many good things about, so many people have been gushing about this, and so I decided to grab myself a copy. It is a middle grade fantasy that I think is actually a debut. This is Amari and the Knight Brothers by B.B. Alston. The cover is great, but this is apparently really, really good. Oh, and also beautiful. Look at the stars. It follows a girl named Amari Peters and it says she's never stopped believing her missing brother Quentin is alive, not even when the police told her otherwise, or when she got in trouble for standing up to bullies who said he was gone for good. So when she finds a ticking briefcase in his closet containing a nomination for a summer tryout at the Bureau of Supernatural Affairs, she's certain the secretive organization holds the key to locating Quentin. If she can just wrap around with the idea of fairies and aliens and all these things being real. So yeah, this looks really, really cool. I am excited to read it. I hear so many amazing things. And then, of course, I had to buy myself a finished copy because I just loved this book so much. I picked up a finished copy of Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell. I had an arc of it. It's one of my favorite books of 2021. And yeah, this was really wonderful. It's a sci-fi romance, kind of. It's like political sci-fi with a political arranged marriage romance plot. And I just love this. This was so wonderful. So had to have a finished copy. All right, I am back. I had to take a break for a while, but I don't know if the lighting looks different or not, but if it does, that is why. Um, I also bought a copy of 400 Souls edited by Ibram X. Kendi and Keisha N. Blaine, mostly because like, I mean, honestly, anything Ibram X. Kendi is working on, I probably want to have. Uh, this is a community history of African America from 1619 to 2019. And what I think is really interesting about it is these are all of the people who contributed. Each person took five years of that period and wrote it. I'm really excited to read this. I do have the audiobook, I think actually from Libra FM as well. So I'm excited to have physical copy to read along with the audio. Um, yeah, I just, I'm sure this is going to be great because I feel like I always love things from Ever Max Kendi, so I got that. Then I also bought a book that I kind of have a story to go along with. Okay, so there was a book that I read when I was a kid that I really loved. It was like a middle grade thriller, and I would always periodically think about this book and think about the plot of the book, and I could never remember what the title was or who the author was, and I couldn't figure out what this what this book was, and I was like, I yeah, I just, I don't know, maybe one day I'll figure it out. So then, last year in December, I did did a review for a book called This Is Not The Jess Show, which has some similarities to this plot, which, which we'll get to. And so recently somebody commented on my review on Goodreads and was like, hey, you know what? This reminds me a lot of the plot from this book by this person and described the plot. And I was like, oh my goodness, that's it. That's the book. That's the book that I've been trying to figure out what it was. Could not for the life of me figure out. So I I, I had to buy it. It was like $4 or something. So this is Running Out of Time by Margaret Peterson Haddix. I loved this. It came out in the 90s. It's a middle grade thriller basically about a girl who believes that she's living in the 1800s in this small village when people start contracting diphtheria and dying from it. And so she finds out that the adults have actually been keeping a secret, that they're part of a project. It's really the 1990s and so she has to try to escape and get help to bring back for this communicable disease. Um, and it was like, I remember loving it so much. Uh, I'm betting a lot of things were probably inspired by this. Like the plot of the village is kind of similar by M. Night Shyamalan that this came out earlier. Anyway, so yeah, I decided to get a copy. I kind of want to do, I don't know, I'm low-key plotting a video where I reread some of my childhood favorites because I've gotten a few of them. Anyway, we'll see, we'll see. But I'm, I'm happy to have this because I just have such good memories of it. And the fact that I was able to finally track it down was really exciting. Then I finally picked up a book I'd been meaning to get for a while. This is Romancing the Duke by Tessa Dare. I love Tessa Dare and this is one of hers I didn't have and really wanted because it includes 
LARPing, basically, which sounds super fun. I have a feeling I'm really gonna love this one. The thing that finally pushed me to do it is I did an episode for my podcast on Tessa Dare with Amanda from The Naughty Librarian and Jen from The Book Refuge. So I'll link that up above, but they were talking about this book in the episode and I was like, okay, I just need to get myself a copy. So I did. <laughs> Uh, then Barnes and Noble was doing this sale where they had like 50% off all of these hardcovers and guys sometimes I am a sucker for a deal <laughs> and so I bought this book. Have I read most of the previous books in the series? No. But do I eventually want to? Yes. And it was only like $13 or $14. So I picked up a hardcover copy of The Trouble with Peace by Joe Abercrombie. Also, it's beautiful. I, like, I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna love the series. I really liked the first book in the First Law trilogy. I need to continue on with it. And then this is like the next trilogy. But uh, yeah, also like I love the texture and the design of the cover. It's really beautiful. Like, I'm not upset I have it. Also, you guys might remember that in December when I did this vlog where Ashley from Bookish Realm picked my TBR, she had me read a book by an indie author, Lucy Eden, who writes indie romance. I really loved that book a lot and have started following Lucy Eden and really wanted to read more from her and discovered she had a couple of really adorable looking novellas, so I decided to order them. First up we have Blind Date with a Book Boyfriend. Two Hopeless Romantics, A Bookstore, A Lion, Tater Tots, A Speakeasy, and A Day They Will Never Forget. Like, guys, they have a meet cute in a bookstore. Does this not look like the most adorable thing you've ever seen? I was like, I need this in my life. And then the other one is this cute one. It's called Bear With Me. An Instagram influencer uses a mountain retreat to rehab her image with the help of a grumpy lumberjack who is more than he appears to be. Like, I am here for it. This is totally my brand of cute romance. Um, so I, I had to pick those up. And then lastly, I have a couple of books that I purchased from Book Depository. One of them, and what else is new, I'm blaming on Mara from Books Like Woe because I was like, this book is just so pretty. And then the other one, I have had some people recommend this book to me, but I didn't like the US cover, so I decided to order the UK cover through Book Depository. So what are they? First up, we have The Magic Toy Shop by Angela Carter. Guys, this book is so pretty. It's so pretty. It's this like special UK edition, Virago Modern Classics. I ordered it on Book Depository. It's like a stunning book. I have been wanting to read from Angela Carter this year and I don't even know what this is about. It's just really pretty. And I hear good things about this. Yeah, this sounds, it sounds interesting. It's a story about a magic toy shop. So, so I bought that. Um, and then the last thing before I get to my book of the month box is I bought a copy of Women, Race, and Class by Angela Davis. This is a classic of nonfiction feminist thinking. And um, after I had talked about books like Hood Feminism and Sister Outsider and loved them so much, somebody was like, you really should read this book. And I was like, yeah, I really should read that book, but I don't like the US cover. So I looked at the UK cover and I just liked this a lot better. So I picked up a copy, adding that to my nonfiction TBR. And then of course, lastly, I have my Book of the Month Club box. I do really like Book of the Month Club. If you're interested in checking them out, I have a link down below. If you use it to sign up, I get a free book, which is nice. They are $15 a month, including shipping for a new release or sometimes pre-release hardcover book. They have five different options in different genres. If you don't like any of the options, you can skip the month, which I occasionally do, like once or twice a year, it seems like. I'll be like, mm, I'm not really that interested in any of these books, so I'm gonna skip. Uh, obviously, I did not do that this month. But in general, I think they have a pretty good selection of options and you can do add-on books um, up to two a month for $10 each. I think I did one, I, I did one add-on because I think I had a credit and so I think one of you guys used my link to sign up so I had a credit for a free book so I used it. So my pick for February was Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. This is a debut sapphic contemporary romance that I hear good things about. It sounds really intriguing. It's about a woman who has finished her PhD in astronomy. She goes on a girl's trip to Vegas to celebrate, lets loose, and ends up getting drunkenly married to a woman that she doesn't know. <laughs> so it's like an accidental Las Vegas marriage 
but then that becomes a romance. So wild, yes, but I hear it's really good. So I'm excited to try that out. That was my pick for the month. And then with my credit, this is a book that I had like a mass market paperback copy of that I've been wanting to read, but I it's been on my wish list from book of the month. So I decided to get this beautiful copy of The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro, which is funny. I realized I actually have two books from him in this book haul. Uh, yeah, this is another kind of, I think this one is more like literary slash historical fiction about this butler or guy who's been basically a butler for a highborn family in the UK when things are really changing and I've heard great things about it. So um, it's also not very long. His books are pretty short. I need to just read them. Um, but I love this. It's so pretty and it has this texture that I really like. I don't know what it is about that. It's like a like a matte texture. I don't know. Anyway, so those were my book of the month club books. Those are all of the books for the month. There were kind of a lot of them. I wasn't expecting to be sent so many things this month, um, which I'm grateful for. And there's a lot of stuff I'm really excited for. So talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for your question of the day, let me know how much covers will influence whether or not you buy a book. I don't know if it's petty, but if I really don't like a cover, I'm less likely to buy a physical copy. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if, like, if it was like a favorite, maybe I would just get past it. But yeah, is that just me or are other people actually affected by the covers? Like if I hate a cover, even if I lo like the book a lot, I might not want to own it. That, that, that's probably kind of petty, but it is what it is. Let me know how you feel about covers and how much it affects whether or not you're going to buy something. Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you want to support the work of the channel, check out the Patreon linked down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.